Base 29 bucks, 29.99. 1 800 Flowers. The Catino Mobley, over a decade in the NBA, all rookie team out of Rhode Island. Okay, so let's start with Katie gets hurt. So I was. And their difference really good. It's sprinting around. They move. They're more fluid. What do you make? Can, can the Warriors beat Houston without KD? I think they can. Um, I've been saying this for a long time. KD, to me, it's like you have a mansion, okay? You live in Manhattan Beach, sure. on the ocean, those huge homes. Yeah, yeah. Okay? You have a Ferrari, you have a Lamborghini, and you have a Bentley. Okay? Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, you purchase a Rolls Royce. Do you really need the Rolls Royce? You don't even need the Lamborghini, do you? Right? So, KD coming to the Golden State Warriors is more of like a luxury. It's not a necessity. He's not making them better. Well, he's also he's a, a shooter, and they had the two best shooters in the world. Point. Now, when you said, what you just say? Okay, when KD's not there, you watch him. They're moving around. Oh, they're there's no question. Door. James Harden's chasing Steph they're all over. They're harder. They're harder to guard. He's more of a one-on-one, -on -one, ball, stay still kind of guy. Stephen Curry is such a great player to me that you've seen that the end of the third quarter. All right, it's time to take over. They're moving around. The ball's just, you know, it's like a hot potato. Yeah. It's harder for Houston to guard you because they can't set up their, their defense as much, right? So Steph has always gave Chris Paul problems because they moved around a lot. KD comes. You get to contain Steph a little more because KD has the ball in the post. And Steph doesn't move as much. There you go. He doesn't move as much. You know, it, it is interesting that, that what KD was to the Warriors, he was duplication of what they had. They had great shooters. Mm -hmm. KD's the best mid-range two in the league. Mm -hmm. That's why Draymond's so valuable. He's what they're not. He's tough. He's physical. He's mm -hmm. sometimes inappropriate. Mm -hmm. He's an energy guy. Draymond's, his value comes in that he's, he does not duplication. Right. Like if you've got, you know, any company in the world, you don't want to hire the same thing over and over and over and over. You exactly. want to hire, you know, the weakness, the strength. Joy and I always talk about this in a relationship. My weaknesses are my wife's strengths. Hopefully I can add things that she can't do. I do think short term... If you ask James Harden, who would you rather play? I think James would rather play the Warriors with KD because I don't think he loves defense. I don't think he's great at defense. I don't think he wants to put the effort on defense. And when KD plays, he can be more stationary. It's more stagnant. It's more stagnant. It's you more can stagnant. rest on the defensive end. It's way easier to guard. Not say, Listen, I'm not saying that when KD's out there, uh, Steph, Clay, Draymond, blah, 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 Oh, yeah, it's it's so much easier. No, not that, but it is harder when it's no KD and you have those two guys running around every single where and you have Golden State has something everybody else don't have, super high IQ without KD, super high. So that right there, they win. They're already up 10 against any team before they even play them. So when you have Stephen Curry and Klay Thompson, what they do is they take a back seat to KD. Because they know everybody's saying, oh, KD's the best in the world. Yes, talent-wise, you are. But when it comes, last time I checked, the best in the world makes everybody else better. I'm going to ask you this. Does KD make Stephen Curry better? No. KD does not make Steph Curry better. Uh, KD, at their best, over the course of 82 games, Steph is allowed to have a lousy night, and you can overcome it. But that's the way to put it. Like, there's no, KD doesn't make Steph better. In fact, if you look at the numbers last night, before KD hurt, after KD hurt, Steph's a different player. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you could literally see it, Katino, within a minute. You're like, oh, I remember that Warrior team. Mm -hmm. That was the Warrior team that was so much fun to watch like three years ago. Right. They, they go right back into their spinning 100 miles an hour. The reason why he got MVP two years in a row. Unanimous. It's super hard to guard that person Running around every single where. Now, they don't have a lot of size now because no. Boogie's gone and KD's out, and I think that's their problem. They've got no size. If I had Boogie, if they can get through Houston and I get Boogie against Denver, because if they face Jokic, who guards him? Mm -hmm. they, they do now. I'm not if, – if you gave me – I don't think they trust Bogut. Uh, their big concern is not just KD's gone. I think it's they don't have any size. Mm -hmm. They're a small They've team. They've always been small, right? Whether they had Bogut – or whether they had uh, what is David Lee early on, they always been small. They always been out rebounded or whatever, what have you. 
but their offense makes up for it. Them switching everything makes up for all of that because today's game is not about posting guys up. No. So who cares? Yeah. Right? So if you want to shoot a two, we're going to shoot – we're going to make 17 to 23s. Cool. Keep shooting your twos. That's that's how they go. And they've been successful in the past five, six years doing the same thing. Let's shift to Kyrie. Um, listen, it happens. Good people, two good people can get together and they don't work. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. Like not every relationship. Kyrie, I think, is a good dude. Boston's an incredible franchise. And I was completely wrong on this. I just figured they'd make it work, and it doesn't. I watched last night. They didn't have any fight. Mm -hmm. it, 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 the coach, the star, the roster, the city, the player. I don't think Boston's man overboard. I think if you brought back the same Celtic team, now I'm not saying they'd beat Milwaukee, but I still think they're better than Toronto. I still think they're better than Indiana. I think they're better than Washington. They may not be better than Milwaukee, with or without Kyrie. That's a different. But I don't think when Kyrie leaves, and I think he will, I don't think the Celtics are bad. I think the Celtics are really good. And it's kind of like the same dynamic with KD and Golden State. That Golden State won because their, their IQ is high and those guys are more established. If KD would have went to Golden State early on, would Stephen Curry have flourished? Would Klay Thompson would have flourished? Would Draymond Green have flourished? Good point. Now, you go to Boston, and I, I saw... Tatum growing. I saw Brown growing. I saw Rozier growing. This is a great point. Right? I They stopped growing. They stopped growing. And then Kyrie Irving, to me, just like KD, has never led a team anyway. Think about the this. The alpha dog was Rus Russell Westbrook. The alpha dog was LeBron James. They weren't alpha dogs. So now you go on other teams. You think it's that easy to lead a team? Have at it. It's funny. D'Angelo Russell was drafted. He was a really good player at Ohio State. Mm -hmm. Comes to the Lakers, and the Lakers re-signed Kobe because Time Warner came to him and said, we're not giving this money with D'Angelo Russell. So they re-signed Kobe, and it stunted D'Angelo's growth. D'Angelo goes to Brooklyn, and you're like, oh, mm -hmm. D'Angelo's an all-star. Victor Oladipo with Westbrook, held down. Mm -hmm. He goes to Indiana. You're like, oh, yep. my God, he's an all-star. Yep. To me, the loser in the Kyrie Irving thing isn't Brad Stevens this morning. What I watched in the last... Two weeks. The loser is Jason Tatum. Mm -hmm. Jason Tatum, if Kyrie left, is a D'Angelo Russell. Mm -hmm. We Everybody bailed on D'Angelo Russell, myself included. I'm like, he, he's not very good. I watched him this year. I'm like, oh, he's a, it's his team. I think the loser in this, I think, Jay, I think this roster without Kyrie is a playoff team, is a three seed or a two seed next year, and I, and I think they're fine. And, and I played it at a high level, and Stephen Francis was all. Steve Francis and myself was always, arguably, one of the best backcourts in NBA yeah, through my years. You were, and we always put pressure on the defense. I feel bad for Tatum, because to me, you can't grow like this, and then all of a sudden have a st because it could be mental. You, something can happen mentally next year. You may knock on wood. Hopefully, it never happens. You can get injured. Now you have another year have to wait to come back and prove it again. But to have Kyrie with you, Tatum, to me, Tatum, it's kind of like Allen Iverson, who I love to death and one of the best pound for pound players ever. But Jerry Stackhouse was there, Tim Thomas was there, Larry Hughes, guys were there, and they didn't grow with him. It's just what it is. I just don't like Kyrie Irving with them. And, yes, Tatum, to me, because he was the most he has the promising. Greatest, yeah, most promising. Best, of highest, all of them. Yeah, much more, much higher ceiling than Gordon Hayward. Right. He was the most promising. And I'm not a fan of Gordon Hayward's. But he's the, he was the most promising one to take that franchise to another level. And this year And they just, stunted his growth. No question. With all of, they have four or five guys that play the same position. To me, and they need, they need the ball. Yeah. Like, and he, they're not giving it to him to close games out. Yeah. They didn't even try to give it to him when Kyrie was here during the season to even help him understand, like, okay, you know what? You and Kyrie can share this. Kyrie didn't even try to give it to him no. close games at the end of games. Nope. Doesn't trust all. him. Doesn't trust him. I mean, think about it. Eight for 22, seven for 22, six for 21, but you're a basketball genius. I don't know about genius, but that's not genius. <laughs> Finally, uh, Lakers right now have been in their history well run. Mm -hmm. uh, we see this before where it really doesn't yeah. feel great. Washington Redskins my entire life were well run. Uh, Dan Snyder buys them, and it's been chaos. Quarterbacks, mm -hmm. coaches, GMs, yeah. everybody blames everybody else, but it's off in the – I think Dan Snyder's the problem. Mm -hmm. So the Lakers right now are a mess. Y you were with the Clippers – 
Were you with the the Portland? run Clippers or the well-run Clippers? I was with, it was weird, okay? So I came to the Clippers in 05, 06. Okay, so you were with the poorly run Clippers. No, it was, it was pretty good. I, the first year I came to the Clippers, that was his first, Donald Sterling's first time paying a free agent so much money because he didn't really pay free agents, you know, high-level free agents. He didn't pay money. So finally he did and you were there. And I was there. I, I came there on that, right? And the only thing that was kind of weird... <laughs> Was we were sharing a, a we were <laughs> we were at the Spectrum off of Rosecrans. That's where you trained. Close to Manhattan Beach. Yeah, it's right by my house. Yeah, and it was a to me it was weird because I'm just used to being around like my peers. They're your players. Yeah, and then like I'm sitting next to this older like white guy like and he's like naked <laughs> and he's talking to me. It's like kind of uncomfortable to talk oh, about. It's a public gym. Yeah, it's public. Well, yeah, that's not ideal. I think I, if I was LeBron, I would not want to I mean, be. I the only organization so that has, like, So it was the Clippers a, and, and the movie Cocoon. Yeah, I, I, I get it that. It was definitely that. Cocoon. It was definitely Cocoon. You're sitting next to old guys playing backgammon, and they're naked. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, sh sure. Yeah, I mean, a Jared Hall, Big A, I'm <laughs> smelling it all. It's the craziest thing. Listen, I, 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 I'm going to get old. You see the grades. I, I'm, it's fine. But, but it was I, odd. I, yeah, it was a little, you Yeah, know. sure. I, I mean, I've seen I, so many knee braces and so many, like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, I even saw, like, an oxygen tank coming across. No, the, that's not. I don't even think you should be here, That's buddy. not how Jerry Bias ran the Lakers. No, I, <laughs> Catino, I've got your back on that one. That would be a little disconcerting for me. Uh, Catino Mobley, 11 NBA seasons, a well-dressed man. Let's <laughs> find this guy's tailor. Good seeing you, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, Evan. Uh Joy with the news. No, 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 no.